I'm so sad. Our spooky and sweet chapter is coming to a close. We're going to make our quilt. You have two options. You can either do a door banner, which is rectangular, or a wall hanging, which is square. They're both just as easy to put together. They just use sashing. So let's talk about how they're assembled. Your door banner instructions are on page two and your wall hanging instructions are on page three. If you're gonna make the wall hanging, what I'm about to tell you won't be relevant. So if you're doing the wall hanging, you can just skip the next 30 seconds. If you're not, and you're going to make the door banner, your fabric B strips need to be 61 and a half inches long, and I can't stand to have a seam in there. So I would cut from length of fabric. But to do that, you have to cut the length of fabric off of your backing piece that is in your quilt. You will still have enough backing to put on your door banner. You just need to use the edge near the salvage instead of the center part of the quilt. In your kit, you're gonna have two pieces of gray. One is gonna be for the front of your quilt and one is gonna be for the backing of your quilt. And we're gonna cut our fabric bees from the very edge of our backing fabric. That'll still give me enough to have a backing piece. And then my C's and A's can easily come from my leftover that was made from the top. So like I said, I'm gonna make mine a door banner because I think it's super cute. Now I'm gonna hang mine from a fireplace. So I'm gonna put my witchy ghost, some stars. I'm kind of just gonna lay this out. My fabric A, another one of my stars, and then my vampire goes at the bottom. And what I'm gonna do is just start pinning sections together. And if you have a design wall, this is where you can display your blocks and just make sure you have them the way you want them. When I'm sewing something that has a lot of seams and no seams, I always put the no seams on the top. That's totally personal preference. You can do it however you would like. Okay, so now when I'm looking at this, I see that these two seams are pressed funny. I can either pull the stitches out and fix or just leave it. And since I'm kind of doing the assembly, I'm just gonna leave that. So I'll sew these and when you get to the end, I'm just gonna be pressing toward the sashing. So I'll set my seam. Setting your seam just means flatten your seam and press to one side. And here, it doesn't matter which way you press. I'm just pressing towards my sashing or my straight piece. And right here, all of this lines up. I'm a little bit off right here. And I'm gonna show you how to fix that when we get to the end before we put that together. So I'll lay this back out with this at the top. And then here, this goes at the top. This is our A. We're gonna put that here. And I guess it kind of does matter if you wanna switch the pieces because you would need to put your sashing on different spots, but that's easy to fix if you wanna do that. You just have to kind of plan. And then I'm gonna be super crazy and pin this one too. Okay, so when I was sewing this, you can see if I put my ruler right here, it's a little bit off right here. I'm just gonna chop this off. It's not gonna matter, but it's gonna look better when I put my borders on and everywhere else looks nice and straight. So this next step is you're going to take your fabric B strips and join them together. Like I said, I cut my length of fabric. So this is them length of fabric. They will not have a seam. I cut this from the backing. So now I need to attach this, but I cut this wider. And the reason I cut it wider is I want everything to come out straight. It's supposed to measure 61 and a half. 61 and a half divided by two is 30.75. So what I'm going to do is this is the only time I ever use a mat to measure. So once you pin the center and each side, then you just pull it a little bit you wanna pin all the way across the top. Now, the more pins you put, the easier and better it's gonna be because when you're sewing, your border's not gonna move and you're gonna get a straighter border. And I'm gonna do both sides at the same time and then press and then I'm gonna show you after how you cut this and how this is gonna come out straighter. I'm gonna start sewing out here, not right here. So I'm gonna start sewing way out here. When I get right over the fabric, I am gonna backstitch. Then I'm gonna keep going to the very end, quarter inch, 
back stitch here and then go off at least an inch. And then we're going to press and add the final border. Okay, now here, this is super important to set your seams here. See how they're wavy? Set your seam. Then finger press toward the border and put the iron right on that seam and go across. And don't do this. So when I cut this length of fabric, there's no pulling. If you had assembled this with width of fabric, it could go a little bit more wavy. Now, I want you to be a little bit more experienced when you try the length of fabric, but you're gonna get a much more stable border length of fabric. Okay, so like we talked about, I cut my borders bigger. Now, I'm just gonna take my ruler and do a nice cut all the way across. And then you do not have wavy corners on your first part of your border. You're gonna do that on both sides. I'm lining up the line of my ruler on the seam. Now I have the top and bottom border. These are our fabric C rectangles and I'm gonna put them on the top and the bottom. You could also cut these wider I'm gonna show you how to make your corners a 90 degree angle. So the trick to that is to really get this lined up on both sides. Make sure you have a couple pins right by the edge. So with a quarter inch seam, and here I am gonna backstitch. Now, what you can do is you can square off your corners. But if I put my square ruler there, it's already square. But if there's some waviness, you might wanna cut it off. But I'm gonna check all of my sides and they look very square, so I'm not gonna trim that. But if I was, I would trim these. And this is how your door banner looks. So pretty, so fun. So when you're looking at the quilt, if you make the door banner like I did, it is gonna be 17 by 65. And if you make the wall hanging, it's gonna be 30 by 34 and a half. Either way, I think it's super cute. And I did wanna point out, I think the black binding is really nice because it has a hard stop on the end of a design. And sometimes when you're using solids, you really need a hard stop to your quilt because it brings the focus back to the inside. Now my spooky and sweet door banner is all done. I love the length of it. I can't wait to see all the quilts that you guys make. So make sure to tag us, subscribe, and I'll see you next time.